Within this video, we're going to go ahead and create a material and a material instance. Now, if you don't know what a material instance is, they're really, really helpful for artists because they give a lot more real time feedback. Now, we're going to create a material that is very, very, very simple. So without further ado, let's go ahead and make this happen. So to begin this, let's go ahead and create a little bit of organization. So I'm going to hit control spacebar and I'll bring up my content drawer and I'm going to go ahead and add in a new folder. I'll call this one materials. And inside of here, I can just hit enter. I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go ahead and choose material. And we'll name this one M underscore color. Because it's just going to be a simple color. Then I'm just going to double click on it to go ahead and open it up. And let's go ahead and just dock this up here at the very top. We're going to create a really, really simple material. Basically, it's just going to have a color. It's going to be metallic or not. And it's going to have a sort of roughness to it. So each one of these needs an input. So base color, we're going to use a constant three. And then the metallic and the roughness, we're going to use a constant one. So we can actually create the parameters that we're going to need really quickly for the material instance. So thinking ahead is what I'm doing right now. So first and foremost, if I just go ahead and right click on this, I can say promote to parameter. And it's going to do two things for me. One, it's going to give me what I need. In this case, it's going to give me a constant four because it is a parameter and it also named it base color. So perfect, we're kind of done on that one. We don't have to do anything extra. So we'll do the same thing on metallic. I'll right click and I'll say promote to parameter. And boom, now we get a parameter. Now this is a constant one. You see there's just one value in there and it's already named metallic. So let's just do the same thing for roughness. Right click on it and say promote to parameter. Perfect, so there we go. So that's 90% of the work that we need to be able to do. Now let's talk about each one of these here real quick before we go anywhere. This first one is going to give us our value or our hue. That's great. Right now it's at 0, 0, 0, 0 which is black. So we're not gonna get a whole lot of color out of it. The metallic is either on or off. So zero being off, one being on. And right now it's off, so we'll just leave it as is. And our roughness right here is kind of a parameter between zero and one. So what we can do with each of these is kind of play with them to get the look and feel that we're looking for when we're looking for a physically based material or a PBR. So let's go and play with the roughness really quick so you get a chance to see what this is actually going to do. So at zero, you get a mirror over here on the ball. But what if I change this to something like one? Well, with this node selected, I can come over here inside of my details. And specifically what I'm looking for is this default value. So let's go and just change this to a one and hit enter. And you can see we get something that's very rough. And don't forget about these little arrows if you ever want to set it back to its defaults. So cool, this works really well. So now let's take a moment and actually see what this looks like in the actual game engine. Now don't forget to save up here we definitely don't want to lose anything that we've done. Otherwise, we'd be in big trouble, right? So let's go ahead and just grab this tab, and I'm just going to slide it down here. And let's actually open up our content drawer and our material right here. We can just drag and drop this onto any object. Boom, there we go. Now I'm going to select the object and then zoom in on it by hitting the F key. And you can see it's very reflective. Very reflective, which could be kind of cool, but not so what I want. So if we come over here to our roughness value, and if we open this up a little bit, come down to our default value, and if I change this to one and enter, you see that it changes, which is really nice. Now, this is a really, really, really simple material, so it's pretty much changing in real time, which is nice. But if we have a complex material, what we want is an actual material instance, which is going to be a lot faster. So let's go ahead and make sure that we save this, and let's turn this into a material instance, and you'll see why these parameters are super powerful. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda of pull this off screen really quick, and I'll bring it back in a moment. Let's go back into our content drawer, and I'm gonna right click on the color, and at the very top, you can see that we have a create material instance. So we'll just go ahead and click on that, and you'll see that we get a new material down here. This is M color underscore instance. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and change the name and hit F2. I'm gonna delete the inst on the end of that, and just make this MI color so that I can see that right there at the beginning. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to drop it onto the actual object. Now, you'll notice that nothing happens, but if we go into the content drawer and double click on this, and what it's done is open it up on the other screen, and you'll notice that, let's make this really large here, it has a very different interface. And up here on the right, we have metallic, roughness, and the color. So what we can do with this, and let's actually just make this pretty good sized, right? is that I can control this kind of in real time now, especially with a really heavy material, which we're not playing with. But if I turn on the metallic, and if I start to crank this, if I set this, you can see that it changes kind of in real time. Now, if I go above one, it's not gonna really do anything. So that's just something to know. It's kind of a zero to one value. Let's go ahead and just set that back to zero, and we'll just type in a value of one. So now it's acting like it's metallic. Now, a black isn't a great example for this, but let's go ahead and change the color 
And if we click on this and change it to something kind of like an amber orange or something kind of gold colored here, you can kind of see how this is going to behave. So it looks okay, like that's kind of cool, right? We'll say okay, but if I change my metallic or turn it off, you'll notice that it changes. So what it's doing is it's giving this kind of metallic sheen. Now a square cube is not exactly the greatest thing to put this on. So what if we were to put this on something like this one? All right, so let's kind of zoom in on this. And it gets us a little better idea of what that metallic is actually doing, which is kind of cool. Now, metallic things typically have a little bit of roughness. So let's go and change our roughness from something like 1 to 0.25. There we go. And now we're starting to get kind of this metallic color feel to it, right? Now, if we turn that off, yay, there we go, right? So we can change this on the fly in real time really easy by using a material instance, which is incredibly powerful. So there we go. And what's kind of cool about this is that that master material never actually changes. So if I drag this onto here, there we go, right? I have these two separate pieces. And if and when I change anything inside of the master, it will update inside the instance too. Now, if we've actually changed something in the material instance, we're not gonna see anything update, but it's definitely good to know that we can make many material instances out of this. So let's go ahead and do that next. So to do that, we'll just right click on it and say create material instance. And we'll call this one, let's just call this one blue. Cool. So now if I take and drag this one over here, and if I open that up, go into blue, and I change this color to be blue, make sure we toggle it on there and change that to blue. Boom, there we go. So you can see that we can change these really easily and create many material instances out of the master. And if we ever change anything inside the master, say, let's go to open this up, say we actually wanted to add some kind of emissive color to it, that would add it to all the other material instances as well. So let's go ahead and just do that. I'll right click on it, say promote to variable. So this is our emissive color. So right now we'll leave it as black, so it's not doing anything. We're gonna save that. And if we change the blue, which I have right here, we'll open that one up. You can see now we have an emissive color in here as well. All right, so let's turn that on. And if I were to change this to something like yellow, make sure that we turn this up. Now it's gonna glow yellow. And what's really, really cool is that here inside of the actual game, this is now actually a light source as well, which is really cool. So if I were to grab this, I'm gonna hold down shift, grab this blue arrow right here and click and drag. And the camera will come along with it. And you can see this is now actually lighting up underneath here too, right? So these emissive colors are a lot of fun to play with. Let's go ahead and say, okay. So there you have it. We've actually created a material, a couple of material instances, and you can see how these material instances update if you update the master as well.